Experience is now the organizing principle of the global economy. That's how SAP CEO Bill McDermott introduced the experience economy at Sapphire Now in Orlando. We spoke to a dozen influencers and thought leaders about what the experience economy and experience management mean to them. You know, when I hear experience economy, I think about experience being the number one differentiator in business today. It's kind of this thing that's grown out of what we know to be true, and that is business is done through relationships. People might forget who you are and what you do, but they will never forget how you make them feel. Basically, everything what we do is experience. So the experience economy already exists for many years, but we use now more and more technology to support our experience. For me, the experience economy is really about how we can get value out of data and technologies to improve customer experience, employee experience. Everyone, all those external stakeholders as well as internal stakeholders. And experiences with really any individual that the brand is going to interact with or have a touch point with. That's what it means to me when we talk about an experience economy. Delivering an incredible experience really comes down to data. Having the data about customers and what those pain points are, what those preferences are. You have to think about reducing friction. I don't want to or desire to interact with a human for commodity services. But you need to have the right information in place at the right time. And these days, the latency is so small. You want that customer service representative to have all the latest information right at their fingertips. Technology allows you to uh, create uh, individual experiences. Companies can look into that data and really customize your experience to what you would really like to have. Right now, companies can know John likes blue shirts, Jim likes red shirts. We know certain things about you. We have to be careful about how we use that information. There's a difference between personalization and getting personal. And so crossing that line of, of too personal, hey, you have too much information about me, can really change a, a positive experience to a negative experience. To understand what a customer wants, we need to, first of all, listen to customer. It can be through VOC, voice of customer. It can be through NPS, and also analyzing the churn rates. Social media is a great resource to get real-time information on how customers are interacting with your brand or having experiences with the product. Technology now enables us to capture data about every touch point in the customer journey of what they've looked at, what did they think about, because maybe they put it in their shopping cart and then they took it out. Netflix, for example, just took out the rating criteria, but they still measure, I mean, uh, how much length of the content you watch. I think that what we see is that a lot of digital first companies that are based on the web or mobile, they're doing a really great job of enabling a great customer experience. And I think that what we see is a lot of those companies that are digital first are also data native. And so they understand how to analyze that data and process that data. And some technologies are very in innovative and they really set this bar very high, which means there's a lot of pressure on companies to increase their experience, get your data management right, the data acquisition, the data processing, the data insights, the real-time actions, because if you don't, you lose your clients because they don't think you're um, reaching the level of experience anymore. Businesses have to respond to the experience trend by moving out of their siloed structures they have today. So we, we built our organizations around marketing, sales, operations, delivery, customer care, and they don't really talk to each other and they're kind of disjointed when they're facing our customers. Every department has their own data silo. They don't want to talk to each other. They don't want to play nice. Let's integrate this. Let's make it more seamless. Uh, let's take the friction out of it. Let's make it as easy as possible for our customers to do business on the channels and devices and in the manner they, they prefer. If I'm in procurement, if I connect with marketing data, there's a whole wealth of things I can do. And not just marketing, uh, but sales and engineering and all the other departments. If we can combine all that data from across the organization, we can do a lot more. Was this customer just on a website? Did this customer just visit one of our establishments? Were they just on the phone? Get all that information to the customer service rep in real time. And then, of course, you need a polite, caring, professional person to deliver that. It's going to be absolutely critical, this experience economy, that we're focused in on the employee experience as well. Your employee needs to be committed to have the same mindset, the same values as your brand and your customer has. People want to be part of something bigger and that's culture. That's what you need to have in your company. That's how you'll be able to have the best talent within your organization is by delivering those experiences and you'll be relevant to your customer by delivering those exceptional experiences. When companies create a great employee experience, just like with customers, you have loyalty, you have less attrition, 
uh, you might have any increased productivity. So the outcome is obviously good ROI in every front. The outcome from a better experience is a trusted relationship which equals business growth. The biggest point of differentiation for a brand, their ability to consistently deliver great experiences makes them dominant in their industry. Who is giving us the experience that makes us feel seen, heard, acknowledged, and that we build trust with? You will have a business and be relevant five, 10 years from now if you are creating those exquisite experiences that are memorable for your stakeholders, internal and external. Thanks for watching. Click now to find out how three businesses are already using technology and an intelligent enterprise strategy to enhance experiences for their stakeholders. Learn more at sap.com slash intelligent enterprise and please subscribe for more disruptive innovations and transformative insights from the neweconomy.com.